Hello everyone. It is day number two of the fast of Daniel and I'm making this video for all of you. Bishop David wanted me to, to make this video and myself, Bishop David and Miss Evelyn is going to continue to make these videos for you throughout the fast of Daniel to help you understand the word of God, how to get closer to God and even through these 21 days, receive the Holy Spirit. And so we're continuing the topic of love. So we know that there are different kinds of love. Love has different forms. Love comes in different shapes and sizes. It's, it, it's very diverse. And today we're going to be talking about two kinds of love. The kind of love that is from the world and the kind of love that comes from God, that comes from heaven. It's no coincidence that love is the first fruit, the first uh, characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. Love was the first uh, aspect, the first characteristic mentioned because Paul even agrees and says, uh, I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love. I am nothing. So he has, he has faith to move mountains, but if he doesn't have love, he says that he is nothing. And he says other things as well. He says, you know, if he has the gift of prophecy, if he understands all mysteries, he has all knowledge, but he doesn't have love then he has nothing. So we have to have a love for God, for ourselves. And like Bishop David said yesterday, we have to also have a hatred, a hatred for the devil, a hatred towards demons, sins. And if we are not able to hate to that degree, hating demons, hating evil, hating, hating negativity, then we cannot show God the proper love that he deserves. It even says in, uh, I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, the first part was in, in verse 2, but I'm reading from verse 4. Um, love does not rejoice in iniquity. Sorry, that's verse 6. Love does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth. So, you cannot have love with evil. You cannot have love with sin. It does not work that way. True love, godly love. You cannot have the kind of love that comes from heaven, but still have sympathy for the devil, for demons, and for sin. So, Love is the best when it's in the truth. And if a person is not willing to, to live in the truth, they are not willing to receive, they're not able to receive the love that comes from God. Now, there is the, the other love, the worldly love. So the worldly love loves to be in iniquity. The worldly kind of love, the love that comes from the world, enjoys sin. It enjoys being around uh, filth, darkness. But the love that comes from God, it, it enjoys being around the light. It enjoys being around truth. So, we have these two kinds of love. Love from the world and love from from God. So the kind of love that is from the world, it, it does not want to feel any pain. It doesn't want to suffer. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, in verse 4, it says, love suffers long. Love suffers. Love goes through pain to get the point across. Love goes through, you know, tough moments, uncomfortable moments, so that the message can be spread. The message can be sent. But uh, 
love from the world, it doesn't want to feel any pain. It doesn't want to suffer. It doesn't want to strive for anything. When you truly love something, you go the extra mile. You go all the way until you can't go anymore. You go until everything is, every resource, everything that you have is exhausted. That is the kind of love that comes from God. But the worldly love, it doesn't want to strive for anything. The moment it's disappointed, the moment it feels pain, the moment it, you know, goes through any injustice, that love from the world, it fails. It gives up. It throws in the towel. It can't accept to suffer. But the Bible tells us that we will suffer. The Bible tells us that we'll go through problems. And true love, real love, and this is the love that comes from God. Real love is going through pain, going through problems, still suffering, and you can come out on the other side and still love. This was Jesus' sacrifice. I believe this is, this is on par with, you know, the sacrifice of, you know, being nailed to the cross. The pain that he experienced. Having to go through all of that and keep his heart clean. Having to be whipped. Having to be, you know, slandered, called names having to be nailed to the cross, all that suffering. And he couldn't hold a grudge. He couldn't hate anybody. He could have, you know, called out to God and said, God, send fire from above and destroy everything. Send fire from above and, you know, wipe out everybody. Uh, uh, around me and, and, you know, all the people who did this to me, wipe them all out off the face of the earth. He could have done that, but he didn't. He, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgive them. So it's like a, a, a father uh, sees his child do something wrong. And they, did, they didn't know any better. They didn't know what they were doing. They, you know, they have no idea what they're saying. They have no idea what they're doing. Because maybe you just never taught them that specific uh, rule not to say this, not to do that. And they end up doing it with, you know. But you don't necessarily punish them because you never told them that was something that was bad. You never told them that was something that was, you know, wrong. But, so Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So in their mind, they're thinking they're doing the right thing. They're doing something that is right. They're, you know, following the will of God. But in reality, they, they're not. And so love, we even see that love looks past the pain. It looks past, you know, the hurt. It looks past everything and finds a way to forgive Love finds a way to, to let go, to uh, uh, push forward and, and not look at the things that surround the situation. The love that comes from the world, as soon as, you know, you go through injustice, you know, you start to yell and scream and curse, you get angry. You start to get angry. And that anger leads you to do something wrong, to behave unwisely, and it's just a mess. So, God is leading us in this 21 days to love beyond uh, what we feel comfortable with. To love beyond our own standards. Because you and I, were human, and it's only natural for us to disconnect ourselves when somebody has said or, or they've done something wrong. But in these 21 days, we should push through. 
push through all of the disappointments, push through all of the negative thoughts, push through everything and, and love. Love in a way that God would love uh, someone else. Love in a way that's not from the world, not, you know, uh, uh, frail, weak, but love in a way that's strong. Love in a way that will really have the other person uh, grateful for, you know, sticking by their side. They'll be grateful for the encouraging words, never judging them, doubting them, but you believed in them the whole way through, even though they were messed up. In these 21 days, uh, I challenge you, seek out somebody that has been missing this kind of love. They haven't received this kind of love. And they've, you know, even shut themselves off to the idea that that kind of love exists. Let's be the one to love in a way that will really prove the Spirit of God is inside of us. Don't wait for the, the Holy Spirit to come for you to start loving this way. No. Love in this way already. So when God sees what your, your efforts, He sees what you're doing. It will be much easier for him to come down and baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, that, that is what we've been talking about. We're going to continue talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to continue talking about uh, God, getting closer to God, receiving the Holy Spirit. What does it mean? What does it take? And Bishop David... Miss Evelyn and I will continue to post these videos for you so that you can get a greater understanding of what you should be doing in these 21 days. God bless all of you. I hope you have a wonderful day.